You may recall a story we did a few months ago regarding researchers stealing 3D printed designs with sound. Well now, researchers at the University of Michigan are using sound to attack hardware. They're studying hardware component vulnerabilities to help prevent cyber attacks against autonomous cars, the industrial IoT, even the healthcare system, or I mean basically anything with an accelerometer. Their work is based on the idea that software always trusts hardware sensor data to make decisions. Well, it turns out that it's pretty easy to fool the sensors, and they did it with acoustics. They specifically attacked capacitive MEM sensors. Using precisely tuned acoustic tones, they were able to trick 15 different devices, including faking Fitbit steps, which, I mean, come on, we've all been there, and hacking a remote control car. By exploiting these vulnerabilities, they think they have found a way to make devices safer. The researchers have a way to adjust hardware design to eliminate the problem. They also developed two low-cost software defenses that could minimize the vulnerabilities and they've even alerted manufacturers to these issues. Hack my Fitbit, sure, but can you hack my bank account? Cause I can use them out there! In like a lion, out like a lion. Yesterday, Voodoo Manufacturing unveiled Project Skywalker. They describe it as a robot-operated 3D printing cluster, but it's essentially a rack of 3D printers tended by a UR10 robotic arm from Universal Robots. Right now, the 2,000 square foot 3D printer factory floor uses 160 3D printers for part production. But the CEO envisions one day scaling to 10,000 3D printers on the factory floor and becoming a big competitor to injection molding. That day might not be too far into the future. According to a report from 3dprint.com, the company, which was started by a group of former MakerBot engineers, received 1.4 million in seed funding in January of 2017. To be successful, the company will need to cut costs. They believe that by integrating robotics into the manufacturing process, they'll be able to reduce costs by 90% over the next three to five years. See, the robots will have a particular impact trimming labor costs. I mean, they'll run all day and night, and they'll also improve machine efficiency. Robots tend to the 3D printers in an operation they call harvesting. A robot grabs a plate out of the 3D printer, pulls it out of a special harness, and drops it onto a conveyor. It grabs a new plate, places it in the 3D printer, and restarts it. According to the CEO, the robots take over menial and repetitive tasks. The problem is that he says these tasks aren't meant for humans. He hopes, actually, that this automated 3D printing factory will help free humans up to do what they do best. Think. But isn't the problem that these people surviving on menial and repetitive jobs don't necessarily want to think? I mean, maybe they actually can't? I mean, they want to pull the plate, scrape the part, put in the plate, and push the button themselves. All with benefits and a semi-regular schedule. Maybe weekends off, weekend for the family, some sort of water park. In like a lion, out like a lion. Zero to infinity, you know, the company that wants to send tourists to the edge of space in a giant balloon, has now set its sights on the rocket business. And this week, the company successfully launched its first rocket from a balloon at, at the edge of space. So it's working, they got it. They stuck to the business plan and it's working. Satellites, not people, it's working. The launch took place about two weeks ago when half of the Zero to Infinity team sailed a few miles off of the Spanish coast to launch the balloon carrying the rocket. After soaring more than 15 and a half miles into the sky, the other half of the team launched the first Blue Star prototype from the National Institute of Aerospace Technology. According to the company, Blue Star is the first small satellite launcher to use a stratospheric balloon as a first stage. By initiating the rocket ignition from above airspace, the targeted orbit can be reached with expediency and efficiency. Apparently, the patented technique is less risky than any systems currently used because when the rocket-powered phase starts, it's already above 95% of the mass of the atmosphere. The new method also gives the company more flexibility. I mean, you could launch your satellite in as little as two weeks notice at a much lower cost, according to the company. This opens the door for safer and more efficient access to space for small satellites. I mean, I suppose it could work as a potential substitute if you couldn't get a spot on one of SpaceX's big old Falcons. I mean, the last one went well, but the one before that. I'm David Manti, this is Engineering by Design.
see they started with the balloon. Now they have Blue Star, both with a balloon atop them. So that's where the names come from, if there's any question about it. I figured that out. Research! <laughs>